Hello and welcome to the first part in a new series where I'm going to take you through step by step my garden room self build. In fact this garden room is a little more special as it's going to adopt some soundproofing techniques and be used as a drum practice studio. In this video I'm going to talk a bit about planning permission, building regulations and my initial designs. Now, one of the first things you should be thinking about is planning permission. The good news is there are many scenarios where a build is covered under permitted works, which means you do not need to notify your local planning authority. The planning portal website has some really good guides and information which set out the conditions for this. Now, in my case, the outbuilding is not going to be going to the side of the property nor is it in the grounds of a listed building or a national park or protected land, so these do not apply. The principal elevation condition means you're not allowed to build your outbuilding in front of your property. And it's worth bearing in mind that you can only increase the area of your property by up to 50%. This includes all other sheds and outbuildings. One of the main conditions is that you're not allowed to create any living foundation and there are also height restrictions. Now, in my case, I am going to be building within two meters of the property boundary, which means there is a maximum height of 2.5 meters. Now, this does become a bit tricky when it comes to soundproofing the design, but we'll come back onto this point later. There is a nice summary at the end which contains some more links to other information that you're going to want to check out. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is building regulations. Now the next thing is the floor area. If the building is less than 15 square meters then you do not normally need to apply for any building regulation approval. If it is between 15 and 30, as long as there's no sleeping accommodation and you're at least one meter from the boundary, you're normally okay as well. In my case, I am within one meter of the boundary, but as I'm less than 15 square meters, there is no requirement for building rates approval. Now, the one rule you'll not be exempt from is part P of the building regulations for electrical safety. Now, I'll draw your attention firstly to this point at the beginning of the document in the 2013 update. An installer who is not a registered competent person may use a registered third party to certify the work instead of building control. I'll come back to that point in a moment. Part P applies to all electrical installations in outbuildings such as shed, detached garages and domestic greenhouses and in this case it will include a garden room. The person intending to carry out building work in relation to Part P are required to notify building control where the installation comprises of a new circuit or the replacement of a consumer unit. Now the chances are with your garden room you're possibly going to be doing at least one or both of those things. For notable work you now have three options. If you are registered as a competent person you can self-certify your work. If you use a third party contractor who is registered, they can certify the work, or you can have the work certified by the building control. And the following section goes on to explain a little bit more about each option. If you're not registered as a Part P competent person, then your options are to use a registered third party, such as a Part P registered electrician, or to notify the building control and submit them the various plans and be subject to a inspection. Now, your best option is to probably use a Part P registered electrician. Now, it's worth noting that if you engage the electrician before starting the work, um, and they agree to it that you may be able to complete some of the installation work yourself and they can sign off the activity once you are completed. But it's worth engaging with the electrician beforehand and discussing with them as the likelihood that the electrician will come around retrospectively to sign off work that you have done is unlikely. 
A couple of further things to note with building regulations. If you decide to go ahead and do not follow the appropriate channels and are found in breach of the building regulations, you may be liable for some hefty fines. In fact, this could be charged several years after the work's been completed and if you have done the work yourself, then you may be personally liable. The building control have the power to request that if there are any unsafe activities that they are rectified and if you refuse, they even have the right to come and do this themselves and then seek to recover the costs from you. The final thing to note is that if you don't have the appropriate certificates, then you may find you enter complications when you come to sell your property. So overall, it's really not worth trying to cut corners when it comes to the regulations. If of course you're unsure at any point, the best thing to do is to check with your local authority. Okay, so now it's time to talk a little bit more about the design of my drum room. So we're starting here with the concrete base. It's 2.8 meters wide by three meters deep. And you can see I've taken off a corner. This is to allow for a unusual shaped garden and to allow for access behind the drum room. You can see I've now added on the external timber frame and roof. And note here, I've decided to keep a square roof and have an overhang on this corner. Now, one of the main techniques to add some soundproofing to this garden room is to create a room within a room. So you can see here, I've added another set of stud framework and this will sit at least 2.5 centimeters in from the outer frame. The gray dots where you can see here are indications of where bolts will be placed to bolt the frame to the floor. And you'll see how I use those in the next video. I then use SketchUp just to add a few materials, some plasterboard walls and some OSB siding. Just give myself an idea of how many sheets of material I'm going to need, where I might need to make cuts and make sure I can align the stud work to the size of the materials to avoid having to make any awkward or difficult cuts. The last thing I wanted to show you in this video is a little bit more detail about wall construction. So you can see here I have an external stud wall. This is going to be made from 2x4, which is 100 millimeters by approximately 47 millimeters, And the spacing of the studs will be 600 millimeters, which will be more than sufficient for the load that the wall will be carrying. Next, on the exterior side, we're going to add 18 mm OSB, followed by a breather membrane, followed by some standard roofing battens, and then feather cladding for the final external finish and weatherproofing. We then come on to the internal side of things. So we're going to erect another stud wall. This will be made using CLS timber studs, which is slightly thinner, about 89mm by 38mm. We're going to create a space of 2.5cm between the studs of the two walls. This is to create an air gap in the middle of the two walls, which is a key characteristic of a room within a room. I won't go too much in detail about the soundproofing techniques, and there are lots of other videos on YouTube. Once the walls are up, we'll add insulation and a vapour membrane, followed by two layers of soundproofed plasterboard, which is 15 millimetres thick, slightly thicker than the normal plasterboard you probably have in your home. The final wall construction will then approximately be about 30 centimetres. Hopefully, once we finish the project, it will look a little something like this. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, or at least found it a little bit informative, then please do like and share. If you are interested in following the build progress, then I'll be posting regular videos step by step on how I complete the garden room. Um, please subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss those. Lastly, I just wanted to give a mention to a couple of UQ channels which I found particularly useful in these early stages. The first is Jonathan Curtis, who also built a soundproof drum room, and the second is Ali Dillock. The links to their channels are in the description, as well as the links to the various websites that I refer to. If you're wondering which application I've used to do these designs, it is called SketchUp, and there is a great free version which gives you lots of functionality. The next video in the series will be the construction of the concrete base. So for now, stay safe and see you in the next video.